Islam has a very long history on the African continent. There's no doubt that the arrival of Islam mobilized African people, but more importantly, it unified them. African converts to its precepts began to form a new identity, driving many to build one of Africa's greatest empires. Today, we'll be discussing the top five greatest Muslim empires in Africa. <laughs> What up, African world? It's Home Team here, and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and supporting this content. If you'd like to show your support, you may do so by clicking the link in the description box below. As always, I look forward to your input in the comment section below, as I'm sure you'd like to generate your own list on this topic. Can't wait to see what you guys come up with. So let's begin. Coming in at number 5, we have the Ajuran Empire. The Ajuran Empire or the Ajuran Sultanate was a Somali empire located in southern Somalia that began to form around the 13th century. Its capital was the famous eastern African city of Mogadishu. Mogadishu is Somalia's largest city and in its early days it was a small fishing village like the many villages along the eastern African coast. Later it became part of the network of trading towns that existed between Africa, Arabia, India and as far away as China. Mogadishu's ideal location and its interaction with the rest of the world made this Ajuran city very wealthy. After the arrival of Islam, Mogadishu became the adopted home of Asiatic travelers and seafarers and these immigrants contributed to the diversity of the city's population. In the early 16th century, a Portuguese writer named Darte Barbosa had this to say about Mogadishu. It has a king over it and is a place of great trade and merchandise. Ships come there from the kingdom of Cambe and from Aden with stuffs of all kinds and with spices. And they carry away from there much gold, ivory, beeswax and other things upon which they make a profit. In this town there is plenty of meat, wheat, barley and horses and much fruit. It is a very rich place. Out of all the Muslim Somali states, Ajran became the largest and the longest standing, continuing for about 300 years. It also became the only primarily hydraulic empire in Africa. As a water dominant dynasty, the Sultanate monopolized the water resources of the Juba and Shabel rivers. Despite the little information we have about Ajran, we know that the Sultanate applied Sharia law, established a strong standing army, and gave priority to building water supplies and building fortifications. They are also credited with defending Somali territories from the Oromo and Portuguese raids and spreading Islam across the whole region. Ajran was active in the Eastern African gold trade and was well aware of various medieval trade routes. The Ajran Sultanate became the second group of Africans to ever defeat a European force in a naval battle when they faced off against the Portuguese. Next at number 4, we have the Amoravid Empire. The Amoravid Empire first began as a movement of Sanhaja Berbers in about the year 1040. The movement consisted mostly of Sanhaja Berbers further north who began to form a union with various African ethnic groups further south in Senegal. This Islamic awakening, if you will, was significant because it was the first time an African group of people originating from Western Africa conquered an area outside of the continent and in the case of the Amoravids, Spain was their target. Sometime around 1020, a Berber ruler of Adugaz converted to Islam. Yahya, his successor, made a pilgrimage to Mecca and met the Islamic cleric Ibn Yasin. Yahya invited the cleric to return to Africa with him to evangelize among the Berbers. It didn't work. The Berbers exiled Ibn Yasin who was forced to flee to Senegal. In Senegal, Ibn Yasin founded his Islamic movement, the Amoravids. Berbers and Tekwar converts flocked to his standard, fired up by Islam. The Berbers wanted the independence of Adugas from the non-Islamic rule of Wagadu. They also wanted to Islamicize by force if necessary the Berbers of the desert. On the other hand, the Senegalese and Tekrur wanted their independence from Wagadu. A match had been made in heaven. By 1055, the Amoravids wrested Adugas from Wagadu. The first official ruler of the Amoravid Empire was Abu Bakari Abin Umar. Abu Bakari expanded the empire further into the western Sudan and later became recognized as the founder of the famous Moroccan city of Marrakesh in 1062. In 1080, he conquered the kingdom of Tlemcen in modern-day Algeria and founded the present city of that name. 
By about 1086, the Almoravids were under a new leader, the cousin of Abu Bakari, Yusuf Abin Tashfin. Yusuf went on to conquer southern Spain, making it the first time a group of West African Moors spread their power and influence over a European nation. Breaking our top three, we have the Mamluk Sultanate. The Mamluk Sultanate was an Egyptian empire that began in 1250. The previous ruling state, the Ayyubids, determined to build up Egypt's independent military strength, took into their military service large numbers of Turkish slaves called Mamluks. Rigorously trained as mounted horsemen and skilled archers, the Mamluks became powerful soldiers who enforced the payment of tax revenues to the ruling class. Many Mamluks were converted to Islam and rose to positions of great influence and even royalty. Although guaranteed their freedom at age 18, the Mamluks were sometimes still restricted by their enslaved status and were unable to pass their status as soldier kings or landowners onto their descendants. The Mamluks exploited a palace feud to put one of their own into power and in 1250 began the Mamluk Sultanate, which lasted until 1517. The new Mamluk Sultanate made Cairo its capital and under Mamluk rule, the city prospered. By about 1340, not only had Cairo's population increased to about half a million people, making it the largest city on all three continents, but also as the home of Al-Azhar University, it had also become the main seat of learning in the Islamic world. Aside from the advancement the Mamluk Sultanate brought to North Africa, what makes them all the more memorable was the glory they attained against the Mongols as they stemmed the tide of the Mongol invasion. If it weren't for the Mamluks, the Mongols could have potentially swept through large portions of Africa. The Mamluks defeated the Mongols in 1260 at the Battle of Ayin Jalut near Nazareth in modern-day Israel, making them among the first people to bring the Mongols to their knees. Overall, Mamluk strength made Egypt a stable country and an important center of the Arabic-speaking world. For number two, we have the Mali Empire. The glory of Mali is well documented. We can say without a doubt that Mali accomplished several things never before done on the continent. The Mali Empire was founded in West Africa in the year 1235, after the victory of its most notable ruler, Sanjata Kita, at the Battle of Karina. Mali became the only documented West African state to sail the Atlantic Ocean in search of land, to form a constitution called the Korokan Foga, to produce the wealthiest man in human history in Manza Musa, to advance the most important city in West Africa, Timbuktu, and become the first West African state to win a naval battle against a European force in the Portuguese. All these things make Mali not only one of the greatest Muslim empires in Africa, but it makes Mali one of the greatest empires in African history, period. There isn't really much more that needs to be said, as Mali is perhaps the most popular African empire on the continent. This is probably due to two things its ruler Manz Musa who made his presence known across the globe, and the importance of the Malayan city of Timbuktu, making it a powerhouse in the Islamic world. Timbuktu was the most important city in West Africa during medieval times and one of the wealthiest in the world. By the 12th century, Timbuktu was already an active trading post on the routes crossing the Sahara into West Africa, and in the 14th century, the city was absorbed by the Mali Empire and enjoyed a period of prosperity. In its prime, Timbuktu became the primary destination for merchants from the Middle East and North Africa, and many proclaimed that the level of learning at Timbuktu's Sankor University was superior to that of many other Islamic centers around the world. Sankor University was said to be capable of housing 25,000 students and had one of the largest libraries in the world with between 400,000 to 700,000 manuscripts. This is just one of the many reasons why the Mali Empire was one of the greatest Muslim empires in Africa. Its intellectual contribution to human knowledge makes Mali one of the titans of African civilization. And finally, coming in at number one, we have the Kanem Bernou Empire. Kanem Bernou makes the number one spot as the greatest Muslim empire in Africa because of two things. It was the largest lasting empire in all of African history and under its first challenge of civil unrest, it managed to reconquer itself and expand, which of course no other Muslim state had done. Kanem Bornu at its peak was largely located in modern-day Chad, parts of Libya, northern Nigeria, and Cameroon. Even though Kanem became a recognizable empire in around the year 800, it did not convert into Islam until about the 11th century. This is the first African empire on this list 
that was previously a traditional African empire, predating the Islamic movement in Western Africa, Kanem Bornu was first known simply as Kanem, founded by the Zagawa people and then became taken over by Tubu-speaking Kanembu people. The Kanem Empire suffered a civil war that ousted the Kanembu out of the Chad region into northern Nigeria. There, the Kanembu intermarried with the local population, creating a new ethnic group and more importantly, a new empire called Bornu. The Bornu Empire became so powerful that they were able to take back Kanem and make their empire even bigger, becoming the Kanem Bornu Empire. William Reed sums up the journey of Captain Clapperton and his two colleagues to Kanem. He states that in their visit to Kanem Bornu around the 19th century, they were astonished to find among the Negroes magnificent courts, regiments of cavalry, the horses caparisoned in silk for gala days and clad in coats of mail for war, long trains of camels laden with salt and natron and corn and cloth and cowrie shells, which form the currency, and kola nuts, which Arabs call the coffee of the Negroes. They attend with wonder the gigantic fairs at which the cotton goods of Manchester, the red cloth of Saxony, double-barreled guns, razors, tea and sugar, Nuremberg ware, and writing paper were exhibited for sale. They also found merchants who offered to cash their bills upon houses at Tripoli, and scholars acquainted with Avicenna, Averroes, and the Greek philosophers. The Kanem Brno Empire lasted from about 800 to 1893, making it the longest lasting empire in all of Africa and the most glorious Muslim state as it went on to ensure its longevity, influence, and power. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help out in its continued production, please consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Hey, hey.